Hello and welcome to another episode of Heavenward Thinking. I am here tonight with the host of Drash Ministries, Pastor Andy Frud. And we're going to take a look tonight at a chapter that most Christians look at the first half, but don't look at the second half. We're going to be looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 through 28. So I'm going to read them, uh, those verses, in the NIV version, then I'm going to read them in the message version, and then I'm going to ask Pastor Andy a little bit about this section and how we can make it applicable. So from the NIV, Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work. Live in peace with each other, and we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through, through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Greet all God's people with a holy kiss. I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers and sisters. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And then from the message version. And now, friends, we ask you to honor those leaders who work so hard for you, who have been given the responsibility of urging and guiding you along in your obedience. Overwhelm them with your appreciation and love. Get along among yourselves, each of you doing your part. Our counsel is that you warn the freeloaders to get a move on. Gently encourage the stragglers and reach out for the exhausted, pulling them to their feet. Be patient with each person, attentive to individual needs, and be careful that when you get on each other's nerves, you don't snap at each other. Look for the best in each other and always do your best to bring it out. Be cheerful no matter what. Pray all the time. Thank God no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you, who belong to Christ Jesus, to live. Don't suppress the spirit and don't stifle those who have a word from the master. On the other hand, don't be gullible. Check out everything and keep only what's good. Throw out anything tainted with evil. May God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole, put you together, spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit for the coming of our master, Jesus Christ. The one who called you is completely dependable. If he said it, he'll do it. Friends, keep up your prayers for us. Greet all the followers of Jesus there with a holy embrace and make sure this letter gets read to all the brothers and sisters. Don't leave anyone out. The amazing grace of Jesus Christ be with you. So when I read this passage, it's full of so much, so many instructions. What stands out to you most of all? Well, you know, down here at Trash Ministries, I'm known as the application guy. Mm -hmm. um, and so I love this section because it's all about practical application. It's not about, uh, Paul doesn't say to, to the people at Thessalonica, hey, sit around and talk about Christianity. Sit around and talk about doctrine. Sit around and talk about, matter of fact, in part of this, he admonishes them to, hey, those people who are doing that, who aren't doing something, you need to really get behind them. But really, if you start off at the at the first verse there, you know, it's it's a little biased for me to be talking about this or any pastor, because really that's what Paul is is talking about. Hey, look um, with respect to those who are attempting to lead you. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean just pastors, right? But what it means is Hey, you need to have some respect. In it. And I love that he says, at least in the ESV, um, esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Not because of their perfection, not because of what they accomplish, but because of what they are attempting to accomplish. And my take would be that you have a, a unique uh, kind of thought process on this because you've been on the flip side of this. You've been the son of a pastor. You've been in leadership as a, as a family. So your take is probably, uh, you know, would be very interesting to some of these people as well. Mm, yeah, definitely. And I think that's a great thing. We're in Pastor Appreciation Month right now. And, and what a great way to show our pastors and leaders like we respect them and love them. And I love how it, it says in the message version, overwhelm them with appreciation and love. It's going above and beyond, not just simply respecting them, but overwhelming them with that. Yeah, and I like the fact that it's not about doing it because they're doing something great for you or they're making you look better. It doesn't have anything to do with your feelings. It doesn't say honor your leaders because you feel great about them because they make you feel wonderful. 
And it says honor them because of the work they're attempting to accomplish. And Paul would know this well, and, and really he's speaking on behalf of himself to people. But I would add to what you just said, it's part of respecting your leaders. It's not, again, not just pastors, but people who are leading in, in, in ministry. Part of respecting them is taking care of the family as well. Mm. Uh, so we are in Pastor Appreciation Month, uh, but but we're also acknowledging many people who are in ministry and how are we treating them and treating their families. Mm, absolutely. I want to transition now to uh, the next part in here yeah. where he's talking about, uh, we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. And and in the message version, it's it's really getting them, those who are freeloaders, it says, uh, and those who are exhausted and, and need help. And uh, how, as a church, can we come together and encourage each other to not just sit back like you were talking earlier and just talk about Christianity? But how can we really live it out and also come alongside those who are tired out and exhausted from uh, from applying it to real life. Yeah, so I, I think that, you know, this whole passage really fits in with the coronavirus that we've been going through for the last six months. Because on one on one hand, there's this sense that people in ministry haven't had much to do the last six months. Mm -hmm. um, but really, there's a lot of pastors that we talk to, a lot of people in leadership that we talk to, especially like children's ministry, youth ministry people who are attempting to figure this whole thing out, they're actually really tired right now because they've been attempting to keep in contact with people, do things for people. And so when we look at this thing called idleness, really we need to define what it means to be idle. Um, and, and to me, sometimes idleness is the people, the freeloaders, people who know they should be doing something and they just simply aren't. But then there's those that are idle because they're tired out. And while it looks the same, they're taking advantage of what the whole has, um, it, it's not the same. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think part of the answer to your question, and again, I, I look forward to your take on this whole thing, is that we need to be doing life with people so we understand where they are. Is your, is your pastor freeloading or is he tired? Mm -hmm. Is your worship leader freeloading or are they tired? Because Paul talks to both there encourage the the idle people to get moving admonish them like hey like it's why we have a horse whip you mm -hmm. know we mm -hmm. want our horse to to not be lazy but we don't use it to spur on a horse that's gone on a three-hour trail ride uh, so it, it really means we have to do life with people we've got to figure out where they are Absolutely. I like how it says to be attentive to individual needs. And, yeah. and part of teaming up together is understanding uh, that each person is in, in a different place and they're a walk in faith. And, and some people are just being lazy in a moment and some people are just tired, like you were saying. And, and I love how Paul you know, encourages Christians to take a look and be attentive to each need. Don't just gloss it over. Don't just look at first glance, but really team up alongside people and bring out, as it says, bring out the best in each person. And that means not just taking a one-size-fits-all approach, but really encouraging one another and really getting to know each other. Yeah, and you and you notice that Paul, even though he has two sides of, of the teeter-totter there, the idle people that the workers are holding up, and he's encouraging the idle workers to get working so that they can encourage those who have been working. But in the, at the end of that, he says, be patient mm -hmm. with all. Yes. So again, we don't get to just beat up on those that we think are freeloading, and we don't get to beat up on those that have, are already beat up. Uh, we have to be patient and, and encourage people, but you can only get there if you're doing life with people. You mm. know? And again, in this whole coronavirus state, how do we know the people who are, are, are staying away from church or freeloading in general at church? because they they're scared right they've been going through tough things with this whole thing and those that have just decided hey it's just an easy way i don't want to go to church i don't want to solve or serve people at the church so it, we don't know those things unless we do life with them and even then we probably don't know mm -hmm. so paul's whole thing in the midst of all this is hey we need to admonish and we need to, to take care of but in all of it we need to be patient mm -hmm. absolutely well i want to stop there this week and we're going to finish this topic in this section up next week on heavenward thinking but i really just want to challenge our listeners to as we think heavenward and as we consider how to have heavenward thinking to really uh, 
get to know our Christians and team up with each other. And you know, we've, we're called to have an individual faith with our, our Lord and have a real meaningful relationship with Jesus, but we're also called to um, be united um, in our love for Christ. And we're called to come alongside each other and help each other and you know, worship together and build one another up and, and be patient as we work alongside each other. So I really just want to encourage our listeners to help where you can and get to know people and, and serve them as, and as the way you want to be served and to really just step out and, and be patient with each other.